I recently posted a video about why I left Amazon, and in that video I talked about reaching what's called the Amazon cliff. It's a time after four years where your pay at Amazon effectively drops because you no longer get the um, access to the big stock grants being distributed to you every year and it's not nearly as lucrative as it was when you first joined. And I got this comment from a guy by the name of Brandon, and I want to address this comment in this video. He says, I've been at Amazon since July 2017. I actually joined uh, March 2017. He says, the cliff happens because you should be moving up promo by then. If not, you're not doing it right, aka not increasing your value skills, and therefore they want you out. If you are getting promoted, then the stocks and base increase. True, if you are getting promoted, the stocks and base increase, but they still do not increase to the same lucrative levels as if you were to leave and actually boomerang back. That's an actual term. A lot of my colleagues who I used to work with at Amazon boomerang back to Amazon after six months so they can get a new package full of a fresh uh, amount of shares as if they were, you know, a, a brand new hire. But the part of him saying, if not, you're not doing it right, aka not increasing your value skills and therefore they want you out is totally BS. And here's why, because at every team at Amazon, you can't guarantee your movement to be smooth sailing. There are so many factors we can't control in these vi environments. There's a reorg, uh, that winds up happening and all of a sudden you were up for, for promotion and now your manager leaves and you have to build relationships with those people each stage of the journey. It becomes very, very painful. You establish a relationship, you establish this um, sponsor, if you will, and all of a sudden your sponsorship goes away. So a lot of times at this, these companies will be in a role where we'll be reporting to somebody who's at the same exact level. Well, we have to wait for that person to get to the next level before we can move in a lot of cases because they don't want anyone leapfrogging their managers, right? There's the hierarchy. We got to maintain the hierarchy in these corporate environments, which is also why I dislike corporate environments so much because there's all these arbitrary rules. But in any event, it has nothing to do largely with um, not doing it right or not increasing your value or your skills. In fact, it has to do with the companies changing so much and all of these weird reporting structures that happen that can cause us to go crazy. I, I've seen so many people. I just coached a, a guy the other day, and he's been in the same uh, role for a while. He was waiting for promotion, and then all of a sudden, the rug got pulled from under him, and he's like, look, I got a new manager, and now I have to build up everything again for the next one to two years at least. There's no guarantees I'm going get to a, get a promotion because that person has to convince all the other senior stakeholders that you're worthy of being promoted. And the only way that they can do that is by seeing a history of your work. And if they change guard all the times uh, or all the time, then then everything just gets jumbled up and, and, and it becomes very difficult to move, which is why in a lot of videos I say it's more worth it to leave than it is to stay because you're going to get a better package uh, on the entry into a new company than you are when um, when you have to kind of stay and go through these processes of reorgs. Anyway, um, short video. I, I, I think it's... Uh, uh, I totally disagree with this guy on, um, you know, it's uh, you not doing it right. I think there is a, a lot of factors that play into not getting promoted uh, at a company and, and they largely fall outside of what an individual is uh, doing slash not doing. That's all I got for you in this video. Thanks so much for watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.